Hello Oboists, my name is Victoria Larotz and this video is part of a series I've recorded for all state and all Northwest excerpts. It's completely free, except the only cost to you will be to give this video a thumbs up, a positive comment in the YouTube comment sections if you liked it and found it valuable, and please subscribe to my channel so you can have easy access to other coaching and performance videos. We begin with this standard orchestral excerpt by Brahms. There's a lot of work in these seemingly straightforward three lines, so let's get to it. The first thing we always do is to look up every composer we play so that we truly have an understanding of how to play it. What is the musical time period and what are the musical style characteristics of that time period? Where's the composer from? What kind of music did they write? All of the answers you find will help you to perform better and to inhabit the right character correctly. Brahms' dates were 1833 to 1897, which puts him directly in a romantic style of music. He was born in Germany and spent most of his life in Vienna. He was a pianist and composer, and he wrote pieces for solo keyboard, chamber music, songs, choral music, and four amazing symphonies. The Violin Concerto was composed when he was 45 and dedicated to his friend, violinist Joseph Joachim. Reaction to its premiere was mixed, and in fact, violin virtuoso Pablo de Sarasate refused to play it because he said he didn't want to stand on a rostrum, violin in hand, and listen to the oboe playing the only tune in the adagio. When we perform this, we want to make sure that all of our technical issues have been worked out in advance, so all we can focus on is just being expressive and singing through our instrument. This movement is an F, so the first thing to do would be to play an F major scale slow and slurred. Then I would want to check my octave A's with a tuner to check intonation. Now I want my notes above the staff to have a warm sound, so I would do some harmonic tests. I love doing harmonics, they're actually a part of my usual warm-up routine. So actually I'll do a quick demo of that and then I'll show you how I'm doing that. <laughs> To check harmonic A, I would play a low D and then add my side key or second octave key and then use a little extra air intensity. Then for kind of an advanced move, I would go back and forth between my harmonic A and a high A to see if I can get them to match closely. So let's start with that. Then I would do the same with my low E flat to check my B flat for that fourth measure. <laughs> Having the oboe middle C at the end of measure eight is really a gift to us as it will help us place our soft high C in measure nine. Be sure to do some octave checks with your C's and you can check your harmonic on that high C by playing a low F with that second octave key or side key. I've marked in some phrases and mini lifts for you, but how you decide to play it is up to you, the tempo that's chosen, and your conductor. Many choose to play it as sort of an ongoing phrase with only a break or breath before that high C at measure nine. I tend to interpret this as more of a conversation. It has some natural breaks, as I think that sometimes it can give it more of an emotional impact, such as in between measures two and three, where I like to give the impression that we are starting our musical sentence over. However you do it, we want this to be as expressive as possible, and using some rubato is encouraged. Here's a refresher on what rubato means. Also, a quick note on vibrato if you are utilizing that skill. 
This is a sweet and simple me melody filled with yearning. So perhaps you want to sound very pure and just use a vibrato shimmer here and there. Or maybe you want to use a wider vibrato as you think it fits the style better. Recordings are plentiful on YouTube and I have my favorites, but I'll let you discover your own. That's part of the fun. For this recording, I'll attempt to skate right in between those two vibrato styles, and we'll hear what happens. Just make a point to listen to recordings, as we need to know what is happening harmonically. Brahms is a master on how he paints with music, so that's always enjoyable to hear, especially as this section is scored as a lush wind chorale. It's always important to know what's happening within any musical framework to make our oboe lines soar. You will also notice that this is just the first portion of that lovely solo. There's more for you to discover and a nice short solo for the second oboist as well. Adagio is one of the slowest metronome markings and we count this in four as the eighth note gets the beat. We'll do a metronome check, and then I'll demo this gorgeous passage. I'll do something with the last note so that no one will be tempted to try to pass off this recording as their own. Speaking of that last note, be sure to place your embouchure in a round and forward manner so that that C doesn't sound harsh. And do a slight diminuendo as you follow the musical line downwards. In the orchestral setting, the wind chorale will give you two measures before your plaintive entrance, so you'll have time to lock into the tempo and hear the wind chords to set your sweet high A. The next track is for All Northwest and happens to be one of my favorites that I've been playing since high school. I highly recommend ordering and working on the entire piece. And here's a quick look at how the rest of the piece is. This is actually a newer copy as my original copy disintegrated over the years due to so much usage. And maybe you can take a screenshot just to kind of get an idea of it, but make sure that we're supporting our composers and publishers and order your own copy. Handel lived in the Baroque period in the same time frame as Bach and Scarlatti. He was born in Germany, and when he was 27, he moved to London, where he eventually became a naturalized citizen. He composed operas, oratorios, concerto grossi, organ concertos, and some wonderful works for oboe. Not surprising, as oboe was actually an instrument that he played. Be sure to also check out his wonderful oboe sonatas. One of the style characteristics of the Baroque era is to embellish or ornament your music, and that is certainly something we would normally do, but not in this case, as we need to play precisely what is on this page. That being said, if you have this edition or maybe even another one, you may notice a note difference. It's in measure 17 of this excerpt. Um, the first 16th notes of that measure end on a G. However, in some editions, including the one by Southern Music that I have, 
that note is an A. All of the scores and additions that I looked at that are available online, they seem to be kind of equally divided on that note. So either way, in this case, I recommend playing it exactly as written in this excerpt. For the Baroque period, we also want to play these faster movements with a detached style in our tongued notes. So aim for perfect note symmetry in every articulated note. This will also help to set the mood of this piece, and I like to think of this piece as a triumphant royal entrance. The tempo needs to stay absolutely steady as the queen must not be rushed, and no rubato is allowed. The excerpt is, march, is marked in cut time, but my edition is not, and I think it should be felt in four anyway, as it really shouldn't go that quickly. It needs to swagger, not run. We need to make sure that our rhythm is perfect, as always, and we must pay attention to our inner counting voice as we play. I always tell my students to mentally shout out the rhythmic names of dots, rests, and ties, and all of those things are necessary in this excerpt. In fact, I believe one of the reasons this was selected was to check for rhythmic stability. You should stop this video right now, just for a minute, to count and clap this all the way through with your metronome, as that is what I'm about to do next. And then you can come back and contrast and compare. So, do that right now. Okay, now we're back. So, uh, now it's my turn. I'm going to set my metronome to 96. And then I'm going to clap and count it up to about measure 10. Oops, one more. Okay. Let's get the music up there. Okay. One, two, three, four. One and a two and three, four. And one and two and a three, four. And one e and a two and three e and a four. A one e and a two e and a three and four. And one e and a two e and a three and a four. One and two and three, four. One, two and a three, four. And a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one and two, three, four. One and two and three. I think you get the idea. So that's how I like to clap and count. Did you notice that I didn't clap the rests, dots, or ties, but I said them louder and at a different pitch level? That's how I help to train my inner counting voice so that I don't come off those dots or ties early and I don't play on those rests. The counting voice is the best skill and gift that you have, especially when you sight read. By the way, when you work on the same pieces over and over in band, it can be easy just to put your brain on automatic and just rely on knowing how something goes. But I'm going to implore you to never do that again. Train your brain to count everything, every time. Someday you can send me flowers and chocolates in gratitude. There are no dynamic markings in this other than that first forte, and that's pretty appropriate for the Baroque period. So just maintain a confident, projected sound throughout. I tend to taper the majority of phrase endings I play in any time period because I think it sounds more graceful and refined, so I'll pretty much do that here as well. Play a B-flat major scale in a tongued and sassy style and then you should be ready to go. And so now I guess it's my turn to demo. It's going to be very strange to play this without my usual embellishments and articulations, but I'll probably add a couple frills closer to the end to identify it as my recording. I'll set my metronome to 100, so I'll be right in between the requested tempo marking.
I'm glad that these excerpts were the ones chosen for this, as they are both so valuable and gratifying to play. Allow yourself plenty of recording time, more time than you think you actually need, so that the process can be an enriching experience rather than a stressful one. Please leave a comment, subscribe, and I hope to hear you play in the future.